You're like, oh god. But that didn't but matter. Didn't you matter. had to dig. You just do it. Ugh. Just do it. They didn't make uh, accommodations for frozen ground. We were the accommodation. <laughs> You had an entrenching tool. That's right. And, um, yeah. We did. We we got smart. We bought, as a unit, we bought a bunch of shovels, and we would take it out there and use that to break up the ground. And, you know, work smart, not hard. That was sort of... Yeah, but frozen ground is like kind of like frozen a ground no matter what. It's yeah. like a brick. It's like really hard. Yeah, and up in upstate New York, that's like tundra at that yeah. point. It's ridiculous. Did you get to be there in the summer, though? I imagine it's uh, great. In the I did, and it's hot. It's, you know, 94 degrees, right. humid. It's really no different than here. Yeah. It might be a little cooler, but it doesn't make up for just the meanness of the winter when uh, when that shows up. So. Is that anywhere near Niagara Falls or Drum? I'm not No, really it's, it's, so if Niagara Falls is off towards Michigan, mm-hmm. um, Fort Drum is closer to Montreal. Okay, so, uh, so you're right, where the nice. Kingston area is in Canada. That's there's sort of like a direct shot to Kingston, and then Montreal I think is maybe a couple of hours. So you're more east. Yeah. Of, but did you ever get to Niagara Falls? I didn't. Not when I was there. No. Awesome. Yeah. You know, like an outdoor thing. You know, and they have the town and all that stuff, which is very cool. Yeah. But then they have the encarp- escarpment and the gorge that you can walk down, and it's just awe-inspiring. It's this high or higher. Oh, wow. And, and then there's the Niagara River down there. And yeah. You can walk down to it. And it's quite a walk. And then you got to come back up. But there's actually like little stone shelters yeah. that people built out of the stone. And it's, it's really Oh, that's awesome. cool. Yeah, it's, it's a great place to visit. Uh, and a lot of things to do if you like to be outside. Right. I, of course, I went in the summer. But they showed it in the winter. And it, again, it's beautiful. Right. But it's different. I think I'd prefer summer, but yeah, good place to go. Water's different up there too, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It is. It's like a blue green. It's yeah, beautiful. And there's like so much history and islands and things you can walk to. They built bridges, and a lot of industry was there. Yeah, but they they put the kibosh on it because they were ruining the. the yeah. yeah. I mean that's that's and, amazing hydropower right there. Yeah. yeah. Looking to go. And there uh, still are some. Plants, but the way I understand it, back in the turn of the century, that everybody wanted to go up there right. because it was a booming place. But it kind of took away from the beauty of it, so they got you know, a lot of the industry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it's funny you bring up uh, Niagara. We were talking about the series as we were coming up. And I had to do a ton of research on what the future would look like, and one of the things that came up in the research was Niagara Falls is slowly eroding itself back, right? Mm-hmm. And I think um, I think it's still there in 150 years when the story picks up, but not much of it. It's starting to... Right, that rushing water yeah. is wearing it. Yeah, it's changing. Yep. They say they can actually affect the flow of water there. They have some kind of system where they can oh, really? turn it up and down. Yeah. Huh. And from 100 years ago, it's a lot less. Yeah. Than it, than it was a hundred years ago. Oh, the ri- the rapids, the actual yeah. waterfall. It's it's still um, you know awesome, but it was even more awesome yeah. back then, I guess. Yeah. Oh, I can imagine yeah. just the sh- raw power of it. They're diverting some for you know drinking water and some for um, hydroelectric. Yeah. So they diverting some. Of it. But there's a a place there. It's called the Point of No Return, and you can actually go out on these islands, and there's a sign. Once you get past that point, you're pretty much going to go over the falls, and that's the end of it. Although, people have survived. Really? Oh, yeah. There's a, a museum there that shows some, most don't. Yeah. But some people have survived. I guess if you hit it a certain way, yeah, and you're, sure. you're in the right thing, yeah. you can survive it. I wouldn't want to find out, but yeah. I would think the yeah. biggest, uh, I mean, the impact, of course, is going to be insane, right. but right. then... The rapids are going to pull you under, I would think. Right, the, the uh, hydraulic yeah. of it, which happens right out here yeah. on, on that wing dam. If you go in a certain spot at a certain water level, the hydraulic will hold you under. Yeah. So you have to know how to navigate that wing dam. You just don't go over the side because you can get stuck in that hydraulic. Right. you got to go here and keep going that way. Right. It could be dangerous. Okay. Yeah, but people have uh, survived Niagara Falls. I mean, <laughs> Uh, a museum to show 
And people are all the time trying to do it. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. But that sign, it says, point of no return. That's enough for me. I ain't going to pass that. <laughs> <laughs> that, that takes a, a certain level of uh, gutsiness. Yeah. Oh, yeah. To see the sign and yeah. then still continue on. Well, people build these vehicles to do it in. You know? Oh, really? Oh, yeah. And <laughs> I, they have them there, the ones that survive. You know, starting out with a barrel and going on up to a, look like a spaceship. Yeah. Trying to catch all the hydrodynamics and the right, and going at the right spot, you know, you got a slim chance that maybe you're going to talk about it. True. Yeah, that's like those guys that do the speed boat racing, try to set the uh, the surface water mm-hmm. record or whatever. Right. It's something like every, uh, I forget, it's like 99 out of 100 people that try to break the world record have died. Or something of that nature. Like the death toll is insane. Because a little violent. ripple could set it You're off, done. and then yeah. Or the because the the ship's integrity, if it doesn't hold up, and it can't be all that heavy and reinforced because you are trying to, you know, set a speed record. So, yeah, the, the ship's flipping, falling apart, engines exploding, you name it. It's insane. Absolutely insane. They should have stuck to Tai Chi. That's all I'm yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that reminds me of the world's fastest Indian. They made a movie out of it. Where yeah. This guy took an Indian motorcycle from the 30s, and he took everything off it, filed down the tires so there was just a little bit of rubber on there to make it lighter yeah. to get the fastest speed. It's called the world's fastest, and he did. And he was on it in a bathing suit. He didn't want to wear any clothes for weight. You know, I think barefoot. Yeah. And laying on it and just did everything possible to make it fast. And finally did break the record. It, wow. There's a movie. It's really worth watching. The world's fastest Indian. Wow. Yeah. That's uh, so what, what you can do with. Uh, that's stick to itiveness. Yeah. Yeah. It took him years. And it, he was actually taking the rubber off the tires to make them lighter. Wow. Yeah. That's inherently dangerous all into itself. Yeah, on the Bonneville Salt Flats. And, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that's where everybody goes to break the yeah. land records, right? Yeah. Yeah. Not too much chance you're going to run into something out there. No. There's a story <laughs> about these guys in the desert ride their motorcycles blindfolded because there's nothing to hit. Wow. Could you imagine going, you know, 80, 90 miles an hour blindfolded? But it's in the desert, and there's nothing there yeah. to hit. But they, I couldn't imagine doing it. Jeez. But people do that. That must be the adrenaline rush. Wow. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. That's. Uh... <laughs> I, I have a hard time doing like golden rooster with a blindfold on, let alone actually trying to uh, break a speed record. Or... Yeah. Well. Yeah. I, I that would change the whole dynamic. Changes everything. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because yeah. you're no longer spatially locked into anything. Oh, yeah, you're right. And what you end up having to do is you have to internalize everything at that point. So you're no longer thinking about your limbs so much as you're thinking about that straight line all the way up to the crown of your head and making sure your form is there, you're checking in on your ears, shoulders, hips, down to the heels, and it really is just kind of envisioning that tower and keeping it straight because the moment you close your eyes you're going to start to wobble yeah you kind of lose that because normally one of the best ways to keep your balance is to look down about a 45 degree angle and or if you pick a spot on the wall you can do that right yeah take your eyesight away and your equilibrium goes off very quickly so if you pick a spot on the wall Mm -hmm. that helps your balance but looking down, same thing? Yep, it's 45. Just, and just, just you a, target your eyes 45 degrees. Because okay. the only the thing that I find with locking on one uh, point on the wall, what happens if you move? Right. You've got to actually pull yourself off of alignment in order to stick on that one point. Mm-hmm. You don't necessarily want to do that. And as you know, like if you're driving, if you ever piloted a plane, if your eyes go in a certain direction, you start to drift in that direction. Right. So with Tai Chi, if you're going to be moving back and forth, then there's really no time that we're just standing in one place other than maybe the eight for um, Repulse the Monkey. And even that's not going to help you because you're on two feet. 
and you're turning your waist with your head. So looking at one spot doesn't necessarily help. But looking down at a 45 degree angle, it doesn't matter where you are, you're just looking down. You're not focusing on any one point. You're just looking, 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 and okay. then you're down and you come back up. Makes sense. Yeah. I don't know why that works, but it does. <laughs> I keep telling myself I'm going to Google it. If uh, anybody knows why that works, leave it in the comments. <laughs> I'm sure there's some kind of formula to that. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. It's something with your balance. Or, I don't know. But it works. Uh, I leave that up to smarter people than me to figure out why it works. Thank you for joining us for that clip of our weekly podcast. If you want to get more bonage footage or join us for the entire podcast, head on over to Patreon where our Eagle, Tiger, and Dragon subscribers get access to not only what we cast and talk about, but advanced lessons in your forms, in your Tai Chi, and in your life.